shrink. Whatever that is. Possibly. Uh. What? Oh. <sighs> I think I did that right. Really? Oh. It's about to be issues. Hello, welcome to Canadian um, this evening. I just wanted to catch everyone up with the research material that I'm on. And it has to do basically <coughs> what is actually occurring in our lives and in the world as humanity goes through this, what I labeled paradigm shift. If my um, stamina holds at the end of this live stream, it's going to be very short, totally out of order, erratic, because I haven't been feeling well, I got a cold. Um, I will be answering any burning questions you may have. You know, get the material out so we stay on the same page. And, and the title of this live stream, as you see typed in the chat, is the overlay no see the underlay for the overlay and what I'm talking about is uh, the events or the circumstances that exist as we shift from the old paradigm into the new paradigm and I, I have as I've been laying and trying to recover from this insane cold or whatever it is it seems like hay fevers I've just been getting a lot of information, laying there, receiving information. And so, again, it doesn't have a lot of order to it. But I just want to get the idea out there. Um, my lips are white because I got, like, suntan, chap lotion thing on my lips. So, I won't be all cruddy. <laughs> um, so, don't mind me. Ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> so, um, the first thing I want to report is about the astrological energies the energies that will we are moving into um i think it's beginning of what is it september 15th and onwards and the energy that we are in is what i'll i'll call or entitle the tug of war y'all ever heard of the tug of war well uh, it your um awareness about what a tug of war is may actually uh, be re directly related to your age bracket. Well, I'm from the, the age bracket where when we were in middle school, we played tug of war. So I'm going to tell you what tug of war game consisted of. It consisted of two teams and an extremely long rope. The two teams were evenly divided. 
historically, it might be up to 500 people on each side of the rope. But for me, it was probably like 15 people on each side because the class was what 30 people. And then there was the center point. In middle school, the center point was merely a line drawn in the ground. And the center of the rope had a red tag hanging on, on it. Hello, how are you? Um, and, and, and the goal of the game was for each team to pull the rope until the majority of the, the rope or, or the, the red flag was on, on a particular team's side. Historically, what might be between the two teams, hello, is or was like a, a pit of hot fire, fire, coal, and brimstone between the two teams as they tugged. Or you might have seen it on TV and, and, and where they have a tug of war where in between the two teams, usually the red and blue team, is a pit of mud. And the teams pull back and forth until what? One team falls over into that bed of fire or that uh, that mud pit, or in my case in middle school, just draw them across the line. That team was the strongest. It was the winner. The current, the, well, the upcoming astrological energies that we are entering has to do with that tug of war thing. Where we are pulling with others that we are in opposition with. You and someone possibly significant in your life is between your home and your family. Um, go through the zodiac, basically. Uh, the first house is opposite the seventh house. Between you and someone significant in your life, someone you are in a contract with, whether that contract is twin flame, soul mate, whatever the case may be. It could be a significant other, a spouse, whatever. Or the second house is uh, a 150 degree or opposition between the second and the eighth house. The second house representing the, your resources, your lifestyle, your wealth. And it being opposed by others' desires or wants or needs or responses to your demands upon them. It's just tug of war. Who will win? Who will end up, who will lose? Who will end up in the mud pit or in that hot bed of fire or drawn on the other side of the line? We are in this continuous tug of war for what? Power and control. We want power and control for what? So things will fall in our favor. So we can have the assistance that we need, the resources that we need, the money that we need, the security that we need. We're in tug of war. Then it's the uh Third, um, third and sixth house axis, which is no, it's the third and the ninth house axis, which is uh, your your intimate or your immediate proximity and all that it consists of. That's when we talk about the siblings, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, people from your neighborhood or community, whoever makes up your very small social circles. It's what you you initially come to learn and understand about the world and yourself. Now. This is very basic. That level of information. The again, these are people that you uh, have a lot of lighthearted times with, and commune with, and socialize with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You kind of find out, you know, what, what what you stand for, what it's about, what the tribe is about. On the other end, what's pulling at you is more knowledge and more education and um, uh, getting more. Uh, intellectually stimulated and deep and knowledgeable about not only yourself but the world at large tug of war so let's say uh, you're on the ninth house side of the team and you have this broad understanding this philosophical understanding and it's just like way out there how do you home it in and and bring it closer to home and make it your own that would be the third house the tug of war that exists the fourth house and the tenth house axis. The tug of war exists between home and the family and the work and, and your career and your ambition and things like that. And then it's the fifth and the eleventh axis, which is your fabulous creative self-expression. It's really who you are and how you uh, put yourself out into the world versus the eleventh house, the rest of the world and what it has to say and what it represents and what it's about and the individuals in, in the world. The tug of war exists 
And then it's finally the sixth and the twelfth axis. The sixth house talks about your day-to-day -day routine, all that you're called to do in order to satisfy the demands of life, just to make it easier for yourself and hopefully open up the opportunity, keep an opportunity open up, a path clear. If any opportunity opens up that you can take advantage of to make what? Life better for yourself. And then the other side is the twelfth house where Okay, well, that's all good that you hope to satisfy the demands of life. But what about when, like, Francis, things don't go your way, they don't turn out um, in a certain way? What do you do then? It's the house, the 12th house, the house of undoing. You can fall into a lot of places there. And so it's this consistent tug of war. Those are the very basics about what is, uh, the energies are about beginning September 15th and beyond. You will see this manifest in your personal life one way or another. Who will you be tug of warring with? Now, I'm just, like I said, bring you up to date about where I am as far as, I guess, it, I, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I got this cold, y'all. So I'm, I'm not in my at my best at all. Um, so I might start coughing and hacking and doing all that. But I'm getting a little behind uh, as far as, I can't say it's research. It's just the information that I've been getting while I've been laying up being sick. And so uh, I'm going to keep you updated so that when I do come back and I'm, you know, ready to roll, we're on the same page. As usual, if my uh, strength holds out, I will answer any burning questions that you may have at the end of this live stream. It is very short. I anticipate it to be short because my notes are not structured. I've just been taking notes literally. And so I'm going to share. So I talked about the tug of war, and I'm just going to read my notes because I know I don't like to write notes and don't read them. Uh, the tug of war is a battle uh, and plunder. It's a test of strength and endurance. The goal is to bring the rope to a certain distance in one direction against the force of the opposing team's pool. The central point, as uh, stated, can be a mud pit or a, a bed of fire or a simply a line that shows that you are victorious over the other, your opponent, that which opposes you. It is, and I'm, I'm taking some of this information from Wikipedia, uh, just to make sure that you understand what I mean by having a tug of war with something um, significant in your life. This game, the tug of war, or this battle, is the decisive, it's a decisive contest the real struggle or, or tassel, tussle, a real struggle or tussle, a severe contest of supremacy, who will be supreme. It is, um, I don't know what the heck that is. I'm going to let that go. I meant it to be something. Now I want to move on and talk about something else. And... Again, it's not much order. As mentioned, the title of this live stream is the um, overlay for the uh, the underlay. What is the underlay for the overlay? So first, what have we learned? What's actually taking place? Because the overlay for the overplay. Another old quote. And what does that say? Um, that there is one thing, although one thing is presented, there is something else totally going on underneath that not, might not be um, noticeable. It may be shrouded. And the first thing we've identified in this live stream is that beginning September 15th and beyond, we will be going through a, a battle. And I label it as the old game called Tug of War. This tug of war will uh, exist within each of our individual personal lives. And it could have to do with someone significant in our life. It could be a boss, a co-worker. It could be uh, the, the battle between work and home and family or what you want and what you end up getting. It is this ongoing tug of war, the type of war or who your opponent is or the members to your teams, opposing teams is defined in your astrological alignment. That's the first thing we've identified relative to the underlay with the overplay. The next thing is, let me make sure 
what's going on. What is going on? What is the overplay? I guess I should say. Hi, Jordan. You're doing a fabulous job. I've been checking you out. Keep up the good work. Um, the over the 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 overplay. What is the overplay? Well, before I go into the overplay, the overplay. I need to talk about awareness. I guess I can say the awareness. We're talking. I'm talking about the individual person. What am I talking about in this live stream? I'm bringing everybody up to date and up to speed, so we're on the same page, so we understand clearly what's going on in our lives immediate lives and in the world at large. So far, once again, I've identified in this live stream so far that we were we are entering into a tug of war. There are various tug of wars. The type of tug of wars that you will be dealing with can be uh, revealed in your astrological alignment um, via your birth chart and stuff like that. But now I want to talk about like consciousness. Let me see if I can make it make sense. Consciousness. What does it mean to be conscious? What are the various um, components that offer us the ability to be conscious and aware? Well, first and foremost, it's the one initial overall collective consciousness, the God consciousness, the uh, that all already exist. That's number one. Then we're in this physical body, and we have a what? A brain. It's a tool. The brain is a physical tool where the mind is um, the spiritual connection from that godly overall all existing consciousness connection to the physical body. It's the mind. That is the stream. And the brain is a processor that takes in that information, is able to comprehend it, and it is like an alternator, dispenses it out. But what I really want to talk about is the level of the, in consciousness, what is important at this time, and it always has been, but especially now. Why now? Because we are going through a, a paradigm shift from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. We need to be aware. However, this part of our consciousness is free, and it is called or labeled the intelligence. Our intellect is being affected. And so I kind of just want to um, talk about the various levels of intellect, and they call it like the IQ. Now, the IQ can range from anywhere from 20 all the way up and over 200. Why is this important? I must say that a lot of people don't um, respect IQ tests, and I understand their limits. However, the IQ test is good enough for those that are in power or the elitist to measure an individual's level of comprehension so that they'll know if you are awake or if you're asleep. That's all they need to know. Are you aware of what's going on? Or aren't you? In this live stream, we're talking about the underlay for the overplay. All right. What we really want to know about is what's going on underneath. Well, all this playing is taking place on the outside. However, humanities, our intellect is in a stage of arrest, arrested development, if that makes sense to you. Hello. Welcome in in a state of arrested development. So, it is a place of our fall. This is where we're falling. I don't know what religion you are, but the religion I was in had this scripture. It was the scripture that says, my people will die for a lack of knowledge. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yes. That we will perish or that we will fall or fail due to our intellect being in a state of arrested development, meaning we're not developing, we're not advancing, we are not ascending. So, I just want to talk a little bit about intelligence and intellect, rather, and IQ test. IQ, based on IQ test standards, 
An IQ can range from, uh, like I said, 20 all, or even less than 20, I guess. I guess at least 20. 20 all the way up to 200 at least. So when we start talking about a person that has an IQ of 20, I'm going to do the extremities. An IQ of 20. We're talking about profound retardation. We know that that person doesn't have um, the capability of contributing too much. They're exempt as far as I'm concerned. But then the highest level of an IQ. And these are geniuses. Uh, unmeasurable to some extent if you go any further. Geniuses. And these are our people that rule the world. These are our elitists. And they have learned the what? The various, they have mastered the various areas of expertise, fields of study, or academic disciplines. They have mastered at least one. And that's what I want to highlight right here. That these people are considered geniuses because they mastered one discipline. Like, like mathematics or um science or something like that and just that one discipline that they mastered is a filter in which they can view the rest of the world therefore answer so many more questions outside of their discipline but uh, what about the rest of us us average um, old Janes and Joes <coughs> it is um, recorded that the normal or average intelligence is between and why is that important? It is because what a lots of person, the ability, their extent. One thing is for sure, a person with the IQ between 90 and 109 is not uh, a master of any particular discipline. They may have uh, a cherry-picked um, knowledge base that's never complete. Again, the majority of humanity fits in this normalized standard state as far as their intelligence. And we, by the structure that we live under, the construct, the construct is constructed to keep us in this average, numb range, which is arrested development. I'm gonna make all this make sense. I'm just catching y'all up so y'all can be where I am. Why is this difference in intellect or intelligence or IQs important? At this particular time in history, when we're moving from one paradigm into another, when we're moving from the old paradigm into the new paradigm, why is it important? It is important because your intellect uh, is what permits you to become, have understanding, well, consciousness first, clear consciousness, awareness, clarity, and to understand so that you can do what? Make some decisions, make some plans, or whatever the case may be. However, many of us are stuck in this arrested mental development which is causing us not to be able to think clear, to gain clarity. It's hard to communicate. It's hard to remember. All of these things are having an effect upon, upon us. As I stated, when I was in church, one of the scriptures that stood out to me is saying my people would die for a lack of knowledge. Now, why aren't we advancing intellectually? And mind you, Part of in, the intellect is directly associated with ascension. Ascension. So, why aren't why isn't our intellect increasing? Why aren't we ascending? It is because we are intentionally locked in to a certain, a particular um, IQ level, and that IQ level does not permit individuals to become proficient. A master in it in any field. Now, mind you, 
I don't care what sign you are born up under. If you are air, then you are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. You were built. Hello. You, yes, when, I, when I'm done, you sure enough can ask any burning questions you may have. This is a very short live stream. Just here to bring everybody up to date so we're on the same page. So when I feel better, I'm coming back and we're going to keep it moving. So right now, I'm talking about where we are. And so if you have some time to hang around, I'll get to you. So, um, if you were born as an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, you were born with the ability to communicate, the ability to master communications or socializations one way or another. If you were born as an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, you were endowed with the gift to master this realm one way or another. And then there's fire. Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. If you were born under one of the fire signs, you were ordained with the ability to be inspiring and stay motivated and have energy. One way or another, you will execute this, having the ability to move forward on a cause with full faith. That's what you were made to do. And then what is the last one? Water, uh, which is Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. If you were born under one of those zodiac signs that you were endowed, you were born with the ability to become a master of one's emotions and all that it entails and consists of in its power. Why aren't we reaching this level of mastery that was promised to us through our birthright, which is shown to us through our zodiac signs, our sun zodiac signs? Why? Why? Because we are under arrested, uh, mental arrested development. And it's intentional. That's what I'm trying to say. Hello. So, whatever I've been talking about, because I'm going to move on because I don't want to spend too much time. The title of this live stream is The Underlay for the Overplay. And what am I talking about? What's really taking place? There's something being presented while something else is taking place that is shrouded that's much more important. And how we are missing, missing what is happening because our intelligence has been arrested or the development of our intelligence has been arrested ceased retarded <laughs> you know it, it's locked into a particular uh learning curve i'll say we are not mastering not even the gifts we were endowed with at birth and the first thing i've identified that we may not be aware of is that we are each going through, or will soon go through, a tug of war in some areas of our life. Be prepared. Forewarned is forearmed. When you feel the tug, understand it is divinely inspired. It is intentional. It is taking you somewhere. I talked about the intelligence because I want to move on because I want to talk about it seems like we are at the lowest of lowest of the those points it is it do seem like it it really does <coughs> excuse me as a shit I, I got some type of cold or allergy and it's it's an insane experience okay but i'm moving through it i just got all these notes this is just when i'm laying in the bed i've been laying in the bed i roll over and write it down so it's everywhere now um the 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 underlay for the overplay right now i want to talk about the overplay, what's on top, what's being shown, the facade, the face, you know, of, I can't talk about your life personally, but I could talk about the world at large, and then you can look into your own personal life and see what is the, 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 the overplay, you know, the facade, that which is presented, um, that doesn't have all of the truth or the facts shown to us, like a, what they call it, a slide of hands, like the magician, something else is taking place. But you're, you're, you're um, led to look over here while something much more important is taking place back here. So, what is on front? What is on front? Let me see if I can find a notes to talk about just briefly what's on front. Mm. Boo, 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 boo. Mm. Oh, it was the ignoring. Okay. All I see, 
I got written here because I wrote it wrong. The overlay for the underplay. That's how old school and lame I am. <laughs> but that's okay. Y'all know when I write notes, I like to read them um, so that I don't waste my time and energy. So even if I wrote it wrong, I see you understand what I'm saying. When I say the overlay for the underplay, right now we're talking about what's taking place on top um, that is shrouding our ability to see because, and we can't see, we can't have the breakthrough because we are in arrested mental development or intellectual development. It says that a relative, and this is all relative to our ascension. I don't know how far y'all, uh, what they call it, browse here on YouTube or even across the web. It's popular now. What is it? Trending that we are ascending. And based on my research, I mean, my whole life has been a, a, a state of research, but it does seem that we are in a time period in which we are supposed to be ascending. However, there are some higher ups. There are some leaks that have an interest in keeping us from awakening. And how do they do that? By affecting and influencing our level of intellect. And that is what I have coined or deemed the uh, mental, um, arrested mental development to keep us from awakening. So what's taking place on the outside, the cover sheet, we see this facade, is that you can do anything you want to do. But the reality underneath, if you look underneath, and I'm going to talk to the younger folks, especially about this, you know, that there are, this realm, this place from the womb to the tomb is high in the sky or the mountains a human can go and down into the uh, valleys. There are rules to this realm. So, <clears throat> on the outside, we are saying and we are pretending like you can do whatever you want to do and how you want to do it. Now, look, I'm not talking to you. I'm not complaining. I don't care what you do. But I know there are some people that do. And those people are what I call the elitists, those that are in power. And they know that you are not aware because you're intellect is in an arrested developmental stage especially the younger generation is ignoring or not acknowledging that this whole entire ram is constructed ran and controlled by various laws such as laws of the universe and those of the land but they letting you go ahead and do what you got to do old school is Call it, you, you're digging a, a grave for yourself. Okay. But, let's see. Another thing that um, is taking place on top, it's a bunch, seriously, it's a bunch of facades. It's a bunch of smiles. It's a bunch of selfies. And a bu bunch of butt shots. It's happy. It's good. It's great. But the truth of the matter is what we're ignoring underneath is that there are some de de distress associated with being in this realm. Can be detrimental and we're ignoring it and it is obvious it's becoming more and more obvious as these people especially famous people are taking their lives have you asked yourself yet why are all these famous people killing themselves i know it's, it might have even been before robin williams a few years ago why are these famous people killing themselves why them has it ever dawned on you that some of them are committing suicide because we can say it it might have been they calling by divinity. Why? Because if I kill myself, the chances of you knowing it ain't, ain't that great. But the chances of a major star killing themselves in a prime of their life, beautiful, sexy, with money, popping bottles, wearing mink furs, and they kill themselves. Well, everybody's looking at it now. What are you looking at? You are looking at what's taking place underneath. It's the stresses associated with living in this realm. But what you see them on Instagram smiling, popping bottles, champagne, all that glitter is gold to on the outside. But the real truth of the matter is a lot of stress that is being um, covered up. It's like a, a what do they call it, a um, co covert kind of experience we're having, many of us are having. And so what am I talking about right now? I'm talking about the underlay for the overplay. What's taking place on the facade, on the outside, what we see? 
We see an Instagram, Facebook, popping bottles, champagne, glitter, go, yada, yada. But underneath, people are suffering. They are stressed out. And they are killing themselves. It's the reason why the stars are not being able to fight back. They have the money to go get the psychological help, the drug addiction help. But they're not. It is a move on divinity's part to make sure that humanity begins to see. See what? was taking place underneath and stop looking on top. So, what else is taking place? Um, hmm. Ignoring, oh, 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 this is another one that's taking place. And, oh, oh man. Y'all, let me read this here. Uh, because this world intellectualized everything, making us second guess our powers. Very true. That's very true as well. So, what am I laughing about, y'all? I'm laughing about what I'm, what's on the outside, the facade, the overlay, you know, that we're looking at. We're looking again at people popping bottles of money. Money is great. You know, them greenbacks, those kind of things, you know, uh, the peso, whatever's out here. We love it. We we go to work. We get it. But we, many of us, I'm not being funny. I don't think this is common knowledge, especially amongst the younger generation. I keep bringing up the younger generation because the information I got is really pointing to the younger generation. Is that money is not real. It's fake. It's artificial. It's an IOU. The real wealth is in what? Y'all know. The natural resources. All the precious metals and gems, etc., etc. You know, and precious and metals. Money is fake. So what we are seeing at this point in time as we move from the old paradigm into the new paradigm is this many, many millionaires now. But what is it? There's nothing new under the sun. And anything that has been can be again. And I think it was in the 1920s when a depression hit and people went to sleep and woke up and money didn't have any value. The same thing can happen now. And this is what is happening underneath that there's a setup. Oh, it goes deep. Let me see if I can pace myself because it goes deep. What's overlaid? What's the facade? Money is all things. Money is great. It's wonderful. It is the all in all. This is all you need. It gives you everything. It buys you everything. You pop bottles. You can do this. You can do that. That's the overplay. But the underlay, what's really taking place is under there, is that there's an economic shift, a financial shift that's taking place. And one of the possibilities associated with that economic shift is that there can be a depression. And when I say depression, I mean that the, um, the value of the dollar would be totally uh, depreciated to nothing in, in a, within a moment, hmm. even though we have many, many millionaires. So what am I saying in this live stream? I'm just bringing this up to date so we're on the same page about where I am. So when I'm feeling better and we're moving forward, we're all on the same page. Right now, we are talking about moving from the old paradigm into the new paradigm. And that which is shrouded from us. That we aren't able to see. We're not advancing. We're not ascending um, at the pace that we should be. Because there are people that have an interest in keeping us asleep or dumbed down, as some say. And they are doing so by arresting the development of... Of our minds, of our, of our mental states. So we are not uh, being able to see things clearly. Well, then there are these other people that either by birth or some unfortunate incident, that intellect is so low, they really can't contribute, not even to their own lives and the world. No, not even to their own lives. They cannot contribute. It's not possible. But then there are other people that have uh, IQs uh, upwards of near 200. 200. They are proficient in at least one area, um, ac academic field. They are proficient. And they come together with their colleagues in order to do what? Manipulate the circumstances and situations of this world in their favor. And one of those things is arresting our intellectual development. So what is taking place as we're um, making this shift? We are... Ignoring that this ram has rules. Everything is fun and games. I'm going to try to make it short. The facade is a smile. 
the, the facade is a selfie. The, the facade is having a few dollars of greenbacks and acting like you're happy or that you're a boss or you're a gangster or whatever you do. You know, you're fabulous. That's the facade. But you're not looking at the what's taking place underneath. What's taking place underneath is those same rules and regulations that ran these, this ram from the beginning are still in place and required to be executed in order to have this place, this ram, this world that we live in to continue to run and run smoothly. We are ignoring that. But the elitists are not. These are the same people that have become proficient relative to each one of those rules and know how to play the game. Another thing that is taking place underneath why the sunny face facade is out for each and every one of us, as well as collectively, is that we are ignoring that just being in this realm has some stresses that can be detrimental. We don't pay it attention. It's just a smiley face. And the next thing is what's underneath is that money is not real. And the reality of it is that the majority, see we're talking about the majority of humanity does not hold any significant amount of natural resources. When I say natural resources, I'm talking about precious metals and gems and uh, minerals and even the food or the water. You don't hold any interest in it. No, not you. But the elitists do. Whatever, those people in power, those people that are proficient in at least one area, one academic area, I'll say, that has to do directly with the rules that run this realm. They have made us foolish. They have arrested our intellectual development. I'm going somewhere with this. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Let's see. What I want to say right now, it's going to, I hope it don't get it really mixed up. Oh, okay, let's go here. Oh, okay, I won't go there. Something I want to bring up um, now is that, uh, where is it at? I think it's here. Yes, yeah, here. Let's see what I have here. It is the underlay for the overplay. What is the underlay for the overplay that is shrouded by the overplay? I'm just reading my notes, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. The on. Don't go nowhere, paper. Oh, oh yeah. I want to ask you this question. I want you. Hi, hi. How are you? I want you to answer this for yourself. Just think on this. Who are the most af was affluent influential? Affluent, affluent, millennials that you know. What about, let's narrow it down a little bit more. Who are the one percenters? Y'all know the top one percent of humanity? The wealthiest families in the entire world that are running everything? I'm talking about their kids. Those millennials. Those affluent millennials. Examples being Prince Henry. Have you thought about Prince Henry and whatever his brother name is, Charles or something? Well, let's talk about Prince Henry. Prince Henry is a millennial and he was born September 15th, 1984. He is now 33. He's one of the older millennials. Y'all thought about him? Hmm? And then what about this one? He has married the wife, Megan. Remember, Megan supposed to be half black and half white. Ooh, okay, the Brits married an African American into the Brit with the into the British crown, Megan, and she is also a millennial, and she was married. I mean, her birthday is August fourth, Leo, nineteen eighty one, and she's thirty seven. Another older millennial, and then one more, one more, y'all. Have you thought about who your most uh aff afflint afflintial, you know what I'm saying? Millennials are. Hmm? How about Paris Hilton? Huh? Yes, Paris Whitney Hilton, who's an Aquarius. She was born February 17th, 1981, and she's also 37 years old. Why did I bring these afflintial, affl you know what I'm trying to say, millennials up? Because guess what, y'all? Guess what? Oh, did I write it down? Currently, as we move from the old paradigm into the new paradigm, 
This is the changing of the guards. Changing of the guards. Now, I ask you, when you get some free time, look into the characteristics of millennials. Now, millennials, in general, in short, I didn't write it down, have the character traits of, <clears throat> a social character traits of um, influential. <laughs> I know y'all got me. Thank you. Um, the millennials have certain social character traits. And one is that more willing to volunteer. Um, they just go do the work and don't want all the praise and recognition for it. They say uh, what other, uh, I guess, philosophers and psychologists say that this is the um, generation of uh, some of the most narcissistic, uh, um, self entitled, sense of entitlement. Folks, you know, so let me try to clear that up. Now, they say that the millennials are willing to volunteer and very social beings. But all in all, it has some great qualities. It really did. And a close look at it, um, at the character traits, the positive character traits, the, the pros were really nice. Like I said, very social, willing to do volunteer work, et cetera, et cetera. But it was the, the negative of the cons, those personality traits that were um, much more, uh, it carried more power, such as being totally narcissistic, self-centered, self-focused, sense of entitlement. Um, ooh, it was a lot. It was a lot. And that carried more power when I read it than just hearing that millennials are wonderful at volunteering. And I bring that up in association with those examples I, I shared of the inf, of influential millennials, the very wealthy millennials. I'm going to stop right here and talk about the research I did when I started getting this information. When I talk about start getting this information, I mean, I was laying on my sick bed and the thoughts start coming. It says, Nancy, look here. Nancy, look there. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sick. It doesn't matter. Nancy, look there. So I started looking. And so I'm telling you, I live in Detroit, Michigan. And so I'm that uh, Detroit is directly connected to Henry Ford. And so I was like, well, let me look at Henry Ford because I know he got to be the top, you know, got to well, at least close to the top uh, 1% close to it. And so I started tracing his family lineage back. And, you know, they have to do with Henry Ford Hospital, Henry Ford Museum. They, and then I didn't know. I'm just sharing this stuff so you can start getting an understanding of where we are going as we move from one paradigm to the other. Back in the day, Henry Ford married the Firestone, entire Firestone family. Those two very wealthy families came together. They merged their legacies. They had many children. Let's say um, the four people maybe had one child. I remember I was. But that one child might have had five children, which was their great their grandchildren. And then it was the great-grandchildren. Now with the great-great-grandchildren are the millennials. Tell me why. When I was tracking the family lineage, it would no longer tell you who those millennials are. So therefore, you have no idea what they are into what they stand for, and what they're about. But what we do know about the millennials, this is the changing of the guards. They are soon to take their positions as our authority figures, the elitists, the people in power. Is that the primary character traits of the millennials is self-centered, self-focused, Oh, I've got entrepreneurs. Well, now Paris Hilton, they're all entrepreneurs. You know, Paris Hilton got her perfume and stuff like that. But it's about being self-centered, narcissistic, and um, self-focused. Another thing, comparison, what's taking place underneath is, okay, let me get over the overlay. Paris Hilton has perfume. Paris Hilton is on Instagram. She's smiling. She's beautiful. She browned out. Beautiful blonde hair. Amazing. She's rich. She can just do what she wants to do. But underneath, she is an heiress coming into the prime of her life where she's not going to just be an heiress. No. Soon and very soon, the older folks in her family will die. The wealth she has now is nothing in comparison to what she will inherit and the power 
she will inherit. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. It is not only Paris Hilton, but it also, uh, what his name is, whatever Henry, Prince Henry, his brother Charles, his wife Megan, and that's just those two families. We're not talking about their siblings, their other offspring, uh, other, uh, other offsprings. We're not talking about the rest of the families. We're talking around the world. People from Arabia or Africa or, uh, I mean, you go on around the world, China, J uh, China, Japan, name it, where? I, you name it. Who are the top 1% and who are their millennial children? When those older, what am I saying? When I say all of that, who was I talking about? Example, try to narrow it down. Prince Henry is the perfect one, him and Charles. Now we know, no disrespect to the queen. Queen Britain, that's something else to talk about. <laughs> the queen, she's up in age. She has, she's seen better days, Lord knows she has. You know, bless her little soul. But soon and very soon, she too will be called home. I don't care what technological advances we have. Eventually, she going to go home to glory. And if they have mastered and, 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 and conquered death, then she's still going to have to go out the limelight. Who takes her place? You know, who takes her place? Soon and very soon, their father will be gone. Who will take their place? These millennials, is what I'm saying, will be taking their grandparents in their parents' position and taking the seat of power. The millennials, Henry and, oh, it's Henry and William Charles, <laughs> is their dad. Oh, okay, you see how much I be on it. I don't pay attention to that. But that's important, and that's what the information, the energy was telling me about this information, told me to pay attention. Affluential, affluential, that's the word. Yeah, that one. Yep, y'all, I love y'all. <laughs> so, what am I saying? I bring these people, let me read my notes, y'all, if I don't forget nothing. I, I shared that many of the children are hidden. Those millennial children to the top 1% are hidden uh, from the masses. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know what they're about. And their education is definitely 100% different than the basic person's uh, use education. They are where they are, they are learning the rules of this realm, learning the rules of supremacy and of sovereignty, where we, the majority of us, mentality, our intellect is in an arrested state. So we have this changing of the guards that is taking place as we move from one paradigm to the under other. And I just wrote here, it's important to understand what these millennials really stand for and what you have to go back and trace their family history and lineage and stuff. It's just like um, going really deep. Uh, Hitler, it's like Hitler had, may have probably got children and they probably got children, I don't know, and they got children, they got some millennials. Well, you have to trace the family line back because whatever they believed back then when the, the structures are being established, these are uh, mindsets and beliefs that they hand down from generation to generation. Why would any of these youngsters or these millennials let these teachings or beliefs go when it's been highly profitable, profitable to the family? Lineage. You ain't talking about one person, I'm talking about family lineage. It's no way that they would release it. And so, it says it's important to understand what these millennials really stand for and believe in. One must track back over their family lineage, digging deeper and beyond the uh, complementary biographies and obituaries. And it says, Veneration of the older and governor generation has not yet died. Oh, and they talk about. Uh, the, so I'll just take notes when I get the information. And it also was telling me when I say it, the information that was just coming to talk to me, bothering me while I was sick, said these beneficiaries, which is the youth, the millennials, um, they are the beneficiaries of the older generations that governed prior or are currently governing and have not yet died out. So before I forget, I want to make this statement to make it clear so that we're all on the same page. When I feel better and we get to moving on this new paradigm. Who was it? I need to see this page. Hold on, y'all, because I want to 
state focus. Nope, that's not it. I want to state something. Oh, I know. Our jewel stick people, y'all. Here. Oh, what is this? Millennial generation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And a millennial generation are those that born approximately 1980 to 2000. Okay. Now, what I wanted to talk about was uh, Paris Hilton. And I Googled to find out how much is Paris Hilton worth right now before the death of her oldest family member in which she would be a beneficiary. As of this moment, or at least when I Googled, it said that Paris Hilton was worth, was it $300 million? $300 million. I'm going somewhere with this. I really am. It said that, now mind you, Prince Henry, I googled, how much is Prince Henry worth right now? And this is all it said he was worth. And I thought about it. It said he, Prince Henry, inherited from his uh, Princess Diana's estate. Pay attention. Just from Princess Diana's estate, he inherited $25 million. That's like his... When his mom died, the policy on her was $25 million. We're not take, talking about him taking seats of power associated with the crown. We're not talking about that money. We're not talking about the um, dying out of the older generation and him and his brother or whoever coming into power. We're not talking about that money. No, we're just talking about from his mom's death. He was the beneficiary of $25 million. So why is this important? This or these amounts show what these millennials are worth just from being born in the families. Well, we know Paris Hilton got her perfumes, whatever else she got out here that's hoping to accumulate this $300 million. However, when the older generation dies, these children, these young folks, these young adults, I must say, will inherit the remainder of their family's legacy. Now, this is important. This is important. Let me read my notes, y'all. Just ride with me. I can't believe only four folk watch me. Am I that boring, y'all? I'm going somewhere with this, though. Okay. Um. Okay. This is where I'm headed here. Okay, that goes with that. Um, deficiency of birth environment. Oh, and I just went on. Oh, I didn't finish this. I'm just going to back up to make sure that I covered everything. I was talking about consciousness and where we are, you know, mentally. I talked about consciousness, the overall consciousness, the brain as the physical uh, instrument, you know, that takes in, absorbs, and allows us to process and then does the alternator kind of um, processing, you know, distribution. And I talked about intellect, the individual's ability to comprehend and understand. There's also gathering of information and knowledge. And then the activation of that, uh, the timely activation of that information and knowledge, which is wisdom. We are not at that level. We are not getting there. So don't let anybody fool you when they say we are ascending. Until we get control of our intellect, get it on a, what do you call it? liberated from being arrested, then we can't ascend. Uh, I need, I can't see nothing, Lord. Let me put on my heavier bifocals. Because I'm about to go somewhere with this. If you just ride with me. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. I'm starting to have fun, even in my sick time. Oh, I can see better. People will find this when it is time for them to hear you are not boring. Oh, thank you so much. I need that boss of confidence. Because I started to give up. I said, Lord, this is ridiculous. I've been on here for five years. And all this research and divinity bombarded me with information. I am getting no support. Don't nobody hear me. I'm like, what the hell for? But I, it pushed me out the bed today. So I freshened up for y'all. But as soon as I get done, I roll it right back over in the bed. And then be sick a little while longer. Um... 
And so right now, what are we talking about? Let me kind of highlight. I know I'd be kind of drawing things out because I want to make sure that I am, um, you know, giving this information out correctly is the title again of this live stream is called the the underlay for the overplay what is the underlay that which is taking place possibly shrouding from shrouded from our awareness and how is it being shrouded because there's something a facade being presented to us that we are preoccupied with and why are we preoccupied with this outward facade this smiley face this um, what is selfie this quickie why it is because our intelligence has been arrested the development has ceased it's been retarded where there are others that have these extraordinary intellectual abilities and have become proficient in some area and are carrying through the rules and regulations of this realm in order to manipulate circumstances and situations in their paper, paper, favor while the rest are what in that um intellectual arrested development stage and from my religion it said my people will die for lack of knowledge so we are going to break through we have to liberate our intelligence hey justice we hear you and you are brilliant. Oh, thank you. I need it. Look, I need it. Thank you. I need Sometimes I need love too. God dang it. And I appreciate y'all for giving it to me. So, I talked about what's taking place. Just so we'll know what's happening in the upcoming weeks. We are going through a tug of war. It's between me and you or me and my loved one. Or you and your boss. Or the, 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 the. You want what you want. They want what they want. It's back and forth. While all of this madness is going on to try to get us to line up, to wake up, to be on board, to work together. That's enough, ain't it? We're overwhelmed by that. We also got this other stuff going on. We are in the midst of the changing of the guards. From the old school, the old paradigm and the old elitists and they always changing of the guard we're moving into a new paradigm and who will sit on the throne these influential uh afflential uh afflential affluent affluent, affluent millennials y'all got me they will sit on the thrones of power and what do they represent well the only way to tell is if you can identify who these affluent, I got it, affluent millennials are. You got to identify them first. I noticed when I was doing my research, when you get to the millennial level, they blocked out. Most of them blocked out. Uh, Paris Hilton and, and Charles and them, uh, they, they're popular. They were on there, but these other, like other nations and their children, I couldn't find that. I'm going back into it when I get a chance, but I couldn't find them. But the only thing I could do is find, look for the top 1% families, the most wealthiest families. That was hard to find when I Googled too. But okay, I'm going to go back into it. But the only thing I can do is once I find those top 1% most wealthiest families, back over their entire history in order to find out what they stood for, to understand what that millennial will perpetuate in a new way. And how am I, no, I'm capable of doing that, no, it's going to be right. It is because... These people have maintained wealth, not riches, wealth for generation after generation. Not a millennial going or in a new future and try to change anything. Why? Because it's already been successful. Nothing that their family has done has been debunked. Not never. It is sustained wealth for generations. So, why has so much been put in place to arrest our intellectual development it is so that we cannot see what is taking place why because this world this world this experience is highly beneficial it's highly if the majority is in the dark they're very wealthy the elitists can continue to make money off of them that's what the real bottom line is about so okay I'm, I'm going back because, okay, whatever. 
talking about the intelligence. Oh, I was talking about the intelligence. The intelligence, and it's about, and I bring that up in the various levels associated with consciousness and awareness, and, and it's the consciousness, the brain, the mind, the intellect, it's our knowledge and wisdom that we are entering now into the age of Aquarius I always talk about that uh, this slow moving process would it take 200 and 2600 years or something like that I've lost track so um, time of gathering information and knowledge in order to uh, have wisdom you know so what am I saying that right now the information is being offered to humanity at large However, it's very difficult for us to get it because our um, intellect is in that state of arrested development, but it's being offered. We have to get our intelligence out of this. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. I'm trying to tie it together. We have to get our intelligence out of this state of arrested development in order to go ahead and gather the knowledge. The only way wisdom is performed is you have to first have the knowledge. Then you have to be confronted with the experience, a experience, and be able to put that knowledge in the appropriate place when necessary. And that is when wisdom is executed. So we're a long way from ascension. And it says, okay, it says, what affects one's intelligence? I'm just going to highlight that and I'm going to move on because I'm going somewhere, y'all. I'm going somewhere. And it's probably not somewhere y'all expected me to go. So what affects one's intelligence? That is to say, one's level of awareness and understanding. I listed three things. You can go into it on your own. But three things that affect our intelligence. You know, we're in a state of arrested, uh, arrested development as far as our intelligence. Well, it's a deficiency from birth. Those that have the IQ that's very, very low, they couldn't do anything about it. They were born that way. <laughs> and that could have to do with food and diet or drug usage of the parent, et cetera, et cetera. We call that what, y'all? Generational curses. Or the next thing, it could be environmental factors where you are. I live in what they call the ghetto. You know, it ain't straight ghetto, but the ghetto. You know, broken glass everywhere, people pissing on the stairs, drug addicts, this, that, and that. That is very mentally um, depressing and uh, limiting. And, you know what I'm saying? So, a person that is in those type of environments, this type of environment, and worse, um, they will shut down just to be able to cope with the circumstance or situation that they find themselves in. So the environmental factors can affect or affect or influence the, the I I intelligence of an individual. Another thing that's very popular that is affecting the intelligence of the individual is the media. You know, um, fake news and all kind of things. We're talking about, oh, not only media, gaming, video games, you know, um, and the preoccupation with the virtual world and not dealing in reality. These are all things that affect the level of intelligence. But I'm going to stop there. That's something that you can look into. Let me see what you say. I can't wait for us to break out of this system and be free to live life on our terms and do what we want. That would really be nice. I think I'll be a lot less stressed out. <laughs> Also, the Saturn-Pluto conjunct in 2020 would change the structure and rules that are currently in place. Absolutely. Already in progress. Jordan, if you have time, um, if you're interested, I'll go to Wackpedia. I found some interesting information. This is something I didn't share. There is um, projected astrological alignments for around 2050. 50 or 2054 that might be interested interesting to you and something that you might want to look at it kind of reveals the state in which the world may be it's quite interesting and the things that the elitists and the people that are proficient in, in various areas uh, of academic disciplines are aware of that the general layman and woman are not aware of it is disheartening you know um, again, it's all been intentional. And so I'm going to move forward and read. Oh, talking about gaming. I went to www.cambridgeblog and I found this information. And it talks about how uh, technological advances, uh, access to instant information and media uh, forces are affecting human intelligence. And these are more of the positive traits. But for everything, there's a pro and con list. Right now, I'm talking about how the intelligence, our intelligence is being manipulated. Um, one is 
our intelligence is being altered, our perception in this case is being altered by, I know this word, sporadical, sporadical, geometry, wouldn't even think I went as high as I did in school, <laughs> school but y'all give me, it was sporadical geometry that was, our minds were trained by the old game Tetris. Do y'all remember the game Tetris? You might have to be a little older, like 40, close to 50, to remember the game Tetris. Or do they have that out now? And so that's what a different shapes move. You had to flip them to make them fit down into each other. It's seeing that sporadical, the spatial uh, geometry and how it moved and fit. And so that that's a positive <coughs> contribution to our intelligence or our, our, our ability to perceive. You say, you are too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another one. Uh, a number two. Another positive. Another pro to um, how technology is affecting or influencing our intelligence. I'm sharing this with you because these are some of the positive contributions it's making to our intelligence. But for every positive, there is a negative or two. But just to show how... Um, our current level of technology, just the technology itself, is affecting our, our again, our intelligence. And we have here uh, the engineering riddles of, I don't even know what this is, M-E-P-T. I ain't never heard of that if I wrote it down right. M-E-P-T. M-E-P-T. Well, I get it. The engineering riddles. They ask you some questions. You just probably got to move along in the game. You got to answer the riddle or figure it out or put it together. I got that. And then the third example of how uh, tech, technolog technological advances are um, affecting or influencing our intelligence is mapping. 27, you remember Tetris? Really? Okay, okay, okay. I ain't that old. Is <laughs> the mapping, and I know this to be true, mapping of or like in Grand Theft Auto, you know, the map be on the side and they be driving and I watch my son play Grand Theft Auto and I was like, this young man knows how to read a map. I try over and over again, but it was the game that taught him how mapping. And so, I, you know, and I, I felt figure all of that, like the mapping and, and the engineering riddles had to do with the military drones because these games, if you pay attention, were out in training the general masses long before they announced drones being out. So, you know, like my son could fly, m most kids, young adults, uh, especially millennials, could fly like the helicopters in Grand Theft Auto and other, uh, what it was, the uh, Call of Duty, you know, Call of Duty, they could do that remote kind of uh, manipulation of, um, of devices and, and different things like that and the mapping. Uh, through the gaming, and I told my son years ago, I can't remember what was another game, because it, it was I think, it was Super Metroid even had mapping um, back in like 1990, and probably, so when the game started getting sophisticated if you a person paid attention, you could tell that it was some type of training, uh, covert training taking place, just for the particular generation and so, I bring it up that I understand that it was intentional the how it was um, helping to construct our intelligence in other ways. There are examples I could use about how we've been limited. But I'm going to stop right there because I want to talk about um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, I don't want to go here yet. I want this to be my closing. I want this to be my closing. So I'm almost done, y'all. Okay, I did that. Okay, I want to be my, I want this to be my closing. This is where I really want to go. And Super Mario, so Super Mario is very linear. Well, I guess when they start going with this Mario go kart and stuff, he was moving around and doing all that. That's when video games lost me. It got got too sophisticated for me. <laughs> so right now, I just want to share this last little information. I don't know how it's going to fit here before going over into this little bit because this is important and it has to do with Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Why cryptocurrency? Um, it all goes together. And it all goes together. So I have here, let's talk about the elitist. 
um, rather old, the older generation, like the queen. Oh, dang, I got wait. The queen um, or any other person in that age bracket or beyond was that generation uh, with a generation X, Y, and whoever generation she is, you know, she's an old lady. So, uh, those generations, rather the elitist is from that, those that are sitting, literally sit in the thrones of power or the positions of power, or if it's the, the, the millennials who will replace them as the guards change. So we're talking about the elitists that are in power or will be in power are practically geniuses or they have immediately really available to them someone who is a genius or near genius. They have nearly that 200 IQ. They are proficient in at least one, maybe more areas or academic fields. Understand that the academic fields are directly related to all the rules associated with this realm in which we live. It is all the rules that are associated with from the moment you pop out the womb until you die out in the grave. It is why men can go up as far in space as they can go or as deep down in an ocean they can go. They are proficient in some area. I ask you, what are you proficient in? The truth is that many of us aren't proficient in not one area, <laughs> even myself. I tried, but maybe if I had known early on what you know going to school and college was really about, I would have never ever chose to have children. I probably would have never chose to fall in love. That would have been my full pursuit. I wish I had known, but I didn't know. So now I have to move from this place that I am now. And the truth is that we don't know. Um, we're not proficient in any area, not at all. Not even when it's it comes to basic um, survival skills, abilities, and techniques. The truth is that, um, how can I say it? The elitist, well, one of the plans of the geniuses or the elitist or those that sit in power were to seize control, I've talked about this before, of all the natural resources in the world. Why? For what purpose? To lead all else and anybody else to be of servitude to them. The truth is, and we overlook this truth, is that seeds, S-E-E-D-S, -E -E is a precious commodity. It's precious. It's life-sustaining. Why? Because it creates food and vegetation. Natural resources are, um, these things are really the source of wealth. Wealth and good health and longevity and having your own sense of power. You know? But we, we were bamboozled and we gave these things over to the elitists, to their families. We're going to talk about these families in a minute. So I just want to talk about um, how they now possess and we don't possess. They understand and we don't understand. See, it's about what's going on. Y'all, God dang it, this dog is knocking at the door. I got to get up because she's going to make me mad in about 5.255 seconds and a half. Come on in here. Lay down. I don't know why everybody want to bother me. And see, I did all my work. I was a good mama. It don't matter. It don't ever end. Can you go to sleep? Hmm. You have cataracts in both eyes really bad, huh? Oh, your breath stinks. Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. It says, you avoided the debt trap. Everything happens for a reason. No, I didn't. <laughs> nope, not at all. <coughs> <clears throat> I'd get caught in every single trap that was possible and then find out about it later. It's sad. I keep trying to have faith. Oh, Lord, this window. That has all been for a reason. I, I know I wouldn't know what I know um, <laughs> if it hadn't went down the way it went down. <sighs> but I wish, Jordan, maybe that would be the first thing divinity helps me out of. Um, so let's talk about uh, the seeds are a commodity. 
the natural resources such as metals and stones and gems and minerals. You know, you can go look at the periodic table. And water, we take certain things for granted. Water is priceless, it's life-sustaining, and it is a commodity now. How about um, self-sustaining? This is things that we don't know how to do, that we should know how to do. But we were bamboozled out of it. I've talked about it before in previous videos. In self-sustaining skills and talents. Remember, these elitists are proficient. In fishing, gardening, basic mechanics and um, engineering and architecture. I'm talking about the basics. Herbalist, basic medical knowledge, making a fire without a doggone match, y'all. Or dressing, how about this, dressing animals for food. Now, there are people that are vegetarians, vegan, and what's the other, paleolithic, that follow uh, these various diets. But then there are, most people are, what do they call, uh, carnivores, include myself. But many people don't even know how to dress an animal. They've never seen an animal slaughter. They don't even know what I mean, uh, some people, when I say to dress an animal. And again, I'm talking to the younger generation why? Because you are next in line. And these are things that the elitists are counting on that you don't know. And many of you do not know it. You don't think it's important. Hmm. That's another thing. Uh, they want you to not think it's important. Like they don't want you to think education is important. Um, they don't want you to understand the importance of the law. And this is a part of the trickery that exists associated with moving from the old paradigm into the new paradigm. And it's and the real reality of it is, and I guess the real straight up nerded stuff about this is, that the reality associated with our experiences in this world, uh, historically, are even important and relevant now. And it depends on which culture you are and which community you are raised in all of those things, all of those experiences are important. Right now, relative to my community and in my place, in my space, the youngsters don't understand the significance of education. They're making fast money and they living better than the older folks that's been working 30 and 40 years. But the reality is a depression can happen at a moment's notice and money loses its value. And that's why I'm going over to cryptocurrency in just a moment to let you understand where I believe based on the information I was getting while I was laid up in my sick bed is going and why. All of this stuff is important. It goes back to when Great Britain was going, the Queen and them back in the day, in the 1800s, was going over to Africa getting a piece of the pie. And how that too plays into crypto, upcoming cryptocurrency coming online. All of this, all everything they do is planned out by um, was not cent centuries, centuries upon centuries. They have um, long range plans. We live in the moment. I've talked about that before. Another thing that we don't know about the importance of it, um, I can't think of who it was, but they dealt with burial and keeping down uh, germs and uh Various bacteria and stuff that have to do with things that are buried. Burial is another field of study. And it is also a commodity. You know that funerals cost a whole lot. But we don't take this stuff um, seriously. Um, or how about this? A midwife and birth and all those kind of things. These are all uh, skills and talents necessary in order to continue to move forward successfully. But most of us don't know anything about these particular areas. Um, we're not proficient in any. But these elitists are. And if they themselves are not, you better bet their right hand man or woman officer is a genius highly proficient now i bring that up i want to move over into the cryptocurrency i don't know how i'm gonna do this but i think this might be a little fun i had fun when i was writing when i was researching it um it'd be just too much information now where is that last little piece of information so y'all can start thinking about any questions you might want to ask um because i am going to uh answer any burning questions you may have i feel a little more lively 
and you say these leaders their time is coming to an end in the next couple of years you think do you really think that you know they say that I think their time is coming to an end as far as how they went about obtaining their uh, level or title of elitist and the way they did it was to have the remainder the rest of humanity to go out and um, harvest the land and or and tilled it and and mined and and put their lives on the line and their energy on the line for decades in order to gather the resources where i'm going with the cryptocurrency for generations not generations uh, uh centuries to get them to that elitist state. And so their time of working people to do that, yes, that is over. That is good. That's to an end. But you got to remember, they already made their quota. And that's what we're going to talk about relative to the cryptocurrency coming online. So right now, we're about to move into the cryptocurrency because I want to talk about, um, oh, another thing. This was another uh, trait associated with the millennials. A high level of unemployment. Going back into what you were just saying. Chat disconnected, please wait while we try to reconnect you. Successfully connected. Okay, Jordan, back to you. Um, this was another, some of the traits I was talking about, but millennials early on is that um, they have the highest level of unemployment, um, in the sense of entitlement and narcissism, and very defensive. And so think about if I'm saying that the elites became elitist and they were able to sit in their seats of power and maintain it and build the uh, wealth that they have, generational wealth. Now, we're not talking about they can spend it in a lifetime. No, it's going to carry the next God dang, uh, 10 generations at least, uh, more than that. You know, um, they don't need people to dig up any more a mine anymore. Why? Because they met their quota. If you ever my mine or, or dig or whatever, they met their quota about natural resources. They don't need no more right now. So, unemployment. And that's the answer to unemployment. They're not pushing. They act like they're pushing um, the youth to work, but they're really not. How do we know that? Because the jobs are minimal now. Very, very minimal. And how they how they pacify the, the populace by everybody getting rich quick. But not the people are not being aware that a depression can happen at a moment's notice we can wake up tomorrow and money has no value. But we don't have to worry about that until cryptocurrency, the whole system is up and running. So now we're going here. I need to go way back when I was talking about Paris Hilton with Prince Henry and the Ford kids and all them kind of stuff. And remember, I say, when I Googled, they said Hilton, Paris Hilton was worth $300 million as of yesterday when I Googled her. And Prince Henry was worth $25 million from his mom's estate. Now, this is, the, this is their base money. This basic money, that base, they ain't inherited nothing from nobody else dying. They, 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 they see the power. See the power. Now, I'm trying to talk about cryptocurrency right now. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a financial anything because I don't know none of it. I'm just, you know, listening to the information that I get and... I wash it through the filters that I have through that I possess from my personal experiences. And so what I got is, how can I say this? Let me see. Talking about cryptocurrency. What is cryptocurrency? What is the purpose? The purpose, if I understand it correct, is that crypto cryptocurrency is a move to remove the central banks that have taken control of our financial system. I say it, financial system. We have private, uh, we can say private bankers that are in the midst of our uh, United States, I'll say, or the financial world or something like that. So they want to move them out of play because they, they, they're just getting too much. And how can I say this? Cryptocurrency. Now, how can I say, if I'm getting the information right, <laughs> <laughs> cryptocurrency uh, the current structure we have as far as financial talking financial has one a central bank I guess made of a lot of bankers but it's a central bank in which everything has to go through they want to get rid of them motherfuckers 
right? So rather than have that one central bank, they're going to have the millennials. How many millennials exist? I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the affluent millennials, the top 1% children, millennials. Yeah, because we know right now, just right now, Paris Hilton has $300 million. How can I say this? God dang. Let me say. Another thing I did. No, let me stop. Y'all still with me? Y'all going to be patient with me as I attempt to work through this and share this with you? What I got? Y'all, you know, let me know if you know something different. I want to use um, Prince Henry as an example because he is a direct descendant of the crown. Okay. Remember I said how history is still really important. And the younger generation has very little interest in going back and studying history nor understanding the significance of history. But if you follow uh, the history of the crown back into, I want to say the 1700s, I think that's when uh, the Revolutionary War was. When I think, I, I could begin this wrong with the, the Tea Act and all that kind of stuff. Well, we, uh, around that time, I think prior to, I think it was before that, the, Britain was everywhere. You know, getting their dibs in on what? Every geographical location's resources. I did a video about it. Uh, these are little brief videos that a lot of people didn't watch. One is called War. It might have been under 15 minutes. It talked about war and, and gemstones. And I've talked about these things. So, we have Great Britain going out, seizing control of various lands and countries and areas for the purpose of what? Gaining or harvesting or taking control of that country's natural resources, whether it's oil, whether it's some type of metal or gemstone. Or da, 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 da. Why is that important? Because at the time, um, Great Britain was quartering the market on natural resources that are used to do what? Create our technological advances. Today, we have computers and laptops and flat screens. Da, 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 da. So, now, here we are, hundreds and hundreds of years down the line. Here is Prince Henry, his brother, whoever, William. I got him, you know. And so, right now, uh, Prince Henry is only worth $25 million. That's not a lot of money. But, with $25 million, what can a person buy? Well, I'm trying to get this here. I went and looked up gold, the price of gold. And I think the gold was 1, no, $1,196.61 per troy ounce, per ounce. It might be right. I think it is. Just ride with me. Just trying to get this out. Some, it's something like this. So, let's talk about Troy ounces. Yes, right now, the information is very condensed. I got this much more information to share, but it's condensed. Because it go historically. And it comes back up to date. I'm trying to use Prince Henry to get this idea out. So you can see where cryptocurrency is going. And how the elitists had a plan hundreds and hundreds of years ago. This cryptocurrency is nothing new. It's new to us, but it's nothing to them. They already had the plan. They had to set it in motion. And how we help them. So anyway, trying to cut to the chase and talk about why cryptocurrency is um, the move to take place of the central bank taking seizing control of the financial world, getting rid of them. But rather than have one central bank that controls the financial world, how about have all these? Uh, in, uh, I'm about to do it again. Fl affluent millennials control the whole world banking system. It is an even. It would be an even distribution. How can I say that? Because the top 1% is composed of people from all around the world. The most richest families from Africans to Arabics, I do believe. It was hard to track that information down. I'm going back into it. But we're going to say, hypothetically, case scenario, this is my theory, that the top 1% are made up of all different nationalities of people across the world. They are billionaires, black, white. Chinese, whatever else out here. And they have children. And they have more children. You know what I'm saying? And they have millennials. And these millennials will be beneficiaries 
to their parents or their grandparents' um, wealth. They will sit in seats of power. The goal is to get rid of that central banking system. That one central banking system. Get rid of them old farts. And what we will put in place is the millennials across the board, across the world. Right now, in order to try to make my example clear, we're going to focus on one millennial. And that millennial we're going to use as an example is Prince Henry, who right now, well, well from his mom's death, Miss Diana's death, is worth $25 million. What can you buy with $25 million? Well, I can say this much. With $25 million, you can buy, I didn't do the math for it. Anyway, if gold, let's have a lesson right now so we stay on the same page. I'm trying to get it out. When it comes to the precious metals of this earth and the minerals, they have a certain measurement for them. And it's called a troy. T R O Y. I'm sure we can study historically what Troy is and why they chose that particular term associated with the weight. But a Troy is weight. Troy weight is a system of units of mass customarily met metals and gemstones. It's a system of units. So what am I saying? In order to get one pound, you know what a pound of lunch meat look like, but we're going to make that a pound of lunch meat go. One pound of gold is 12 troy ounces. Meaning, I don't know if y'all have seen them. It's these little bars that they sell in gold and silver. In. It's about that. I don't know where the heck it go. It's about, I, it's, I think it's bigger where it is over here. It's a little bar that they sell it. That is like one twelfth of a Troy. Troy being a pound. So this is one ounce of gold or one ounce of silver or one ounce of whatever. Before we move on, another lesson is, and something to be aware of, is that there are thousands, I ain't going to jump and say thousands, I count it from the periodic, ta periodic table, y'all. Tell me if I'm wrong. Let me know something new so I can dive deeper. I think it was like 85 or 87 metals that exist in this world. I didn't go through all of them. And the reason why I stopped, other than being sick, is I got frustrated. Because over 20 years ago, I did this research when I was in a church. Uh, this is right before I came out to church when I started seeing things differently. And there were various metals that uh, since that time I have never heard of again. As if they were shrouded. We have metals here. When we start talking about an ounce, we have metals in this world that are valued at millions of dollars per ounce. Last night, I didn't feel good, but I couldn't find it no more. I'm going somewhere. Let me read Jordan's statement. I'm going somewhere with y'all. I'm bringing up some facts. and Y'all can research them. Take it further. I done got old. And I ain't going to wish nothing bad on myself. But I can use y'all millennials to help me. So let's see. Millennials are changing the game on how money is made. Yes. No more trading our time for money. No, they don't need it. And they don't need us to work and give us some money. Fake stuff. To go get them the real stuff. Because that's what it's about. They're paying us fake money. To go get the real stuff. And the real stuff were these natural resources, the food, the seas, the water, um, the gold, the diamonds, all these things that lead, led, have led to the technological advances. They never would have been able to do it if we didn't go down in those mines. And many of our people, depending on what nationality you are, it don't matter. They died down in those mines. They got lung cancer and femin, what is it called? Femin, whatever. The lung cancer going down in those mines. People died working for Ford from the asbestos and everything else. They never could have built their legacies without the common layman and laywoman. However, even during that time, our intellect was under arrested development. And the, the systems and structures to make sure the, those vices were created and imposed more uh, heavily on us as we began to move closer and closer to this age of Aquarius, this time of awakening, 
They knew. They knew. Just like I was suggesting, uh, Jordan, that you go over to Wikipedia and look up the astrological alignments for like around 2050. It's some things that they know just based on the astrological alignments. So let me di uh, digress and go back over here and try to get this out. Now, let's say, hypothetically, case scenario, the time comes that Prince Harry uh, inherits his, inherits his um, portion of his family's legacy. Let's say he becomes worth a, a couple of billion dollars. Okay. How many um, pounds of gold could he buy? And that's difficult to say because I'm just choosing one element. But I need you to understand this is the complication. That there are at least 85 to 87 precious metals in this world. Each metal has its own value. The value of that metal per ounce has been determined by its effectiveness in... Um, helping humanity technologically advance. So what am I saying? Just looking at Prince Henry, the inevitable happens. Now he's worth a few billion dollars because we're talking about cryptocurrency. He's one of many millennials, but we're talking about him. He's saying, oh, they had a system set up. This is just trying to make it easier. Prince Henry is over gold. So Prince Henry owns, let's say, uh, $3 billion worth of gold. How can I say this? How many people in this world could $3 billion take care of when the money, see, it's a trick. Remember, cryptocurrency is a digital, it's not paper. You don't get paper. You don't even get the natural resources. You get some imaginary, binary, um, coded, encoded that data that says you're worth X, Y, and Z. So you never have anything. But Prince Henry got $3 billion worth of gold. And it is locked in its basement in Troy's, pounds and pounds of Troy's. You've seen the stack gold. Well, see, now Troy's is, you know, the little stack gold plates. He got $300 billion worth of stack gold in his basement. Heck, the building built of it. Why? So how many people can just the millennial Prince Henry fund every year with $300 billion when not a ounce of gold leaves out of his basement. And he just says, okay, I got enough gold to back $3 billion worth of money to this group of people, the United States. Because another thing that we're missing, because we're talking about what's taking place on the outside to shroud things. Um, was taking place on the outside to shroud what's going on underneath. Underneath, what am I saying? That our move to cryptocurrency will happen. The reason why is to get those central bankers out of control, put those millennials into financial control. Basically, each millennial will be responsible for a particular segment of the population. There will be no real money that comes into any uh, individual's life. There will be no financial resources, I mean, resources, material resources that comes to any individual life. However, it's imaginary. So it's hard to see the imaginary. Uh, it's hard to see the imaginary. Let me try to go on further. Let's say Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton right now is worth $300 million. She has yet to inherit the, uh, be the beneficiary of her family is, have family's wealth. Let's say she becomes another multi-billionaire. Uh, you know, she has, her family is directly associated with the Hilton hotels and so much more. 
she becomes a billionaire. Well, just say hypothetically to make it more simple that um, Paris Hilton is over silver and she invests $3 billion as well. How many people can she take care of for $3 billion and a, not a penny leaves her side? She's never, ever without. It's never distributed except through imagination. This is the source of crypto currency how can i express this why is this important let's go back to history did y'all know that these resources are taxed there's taxation on these precious metals who's taxing them gotta go back to the crown to the early 16 and 1700s when britain went over to africa and seized control and took control of their lands and went on over to portugal and did whatever they gonna do see Folk ain't looking back there. You got to go over there. They went over there to claim those resources. So today, when the taxes are paid on those resources, it's going to the crown. For a thousand, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of years, these mo this money and this tax been going to for the use of these things like tea. When I was talking about 19, it was a 1755, whatever it was. It was going to the crown. Now, it's still going to the crown. How can I say this? So Hillary, we're going to say, I'm going to say hypothetically, I don't know. She's not directly associated with the crown, but she's very wealthy. Part of the 1%, I'll say. She got to pay taxes to the queen. Taxes out that $300 million. Or she can levy us as her tax money to the queen. I don't know how to say it. It all goes back into the development of cryptocurrency. Wow. Yes, sir. Another thing that I fell to share, which might help me be able to say it, is that due to us already have dug up and gave them everything, therefore employment, unemployment is growing, and this new paradigm is coming in, is that um, the world government is looking to what they call a universal income. That's what's missing too. A universal income. Income. It's like a welfare system for all. Exist uh, the basics in life. You know, you need shelter, food, uh, medical. Depends on whatever they make the universal income system. Whatever the depth of it is. So when I say Prince Henry is taking care of. How many ever people can take a three billion dollars? That his 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 resources fund that universal income for a number uh, a, a group or a section of the world. Well, Paris Hilton handles another section of the world, and whatever the other uh, probably thousands of thousands of millennials of, of affluent millennials, they are the new banks. They handle portions of the world. And that is also how they handle their taxes on their precious metals. I wanted to get that out because that's important. Uh, there is some really important things. I want to say something else. What do say? Okay, okay, okay. Now, what I want to talk about, y'all, I'm, I'm about to come up out of here. It was something else I want to talk about. I'm, I'm just putting it out here. Maybe you'll be interested in researching it. Let me know what you find. When I was talking about, uh, I'm going to have to really look a little closer at that thing about the cryptocurrency. I got the information last night. I started my research, but I, I got really tired. But I'm going to go back into it so that um, I can try to explain it better about why the cryptocurrency is taking place, letting you know that it will happen, uh, and who can afford, what was the last uh, account for uh, buying into cryptocurrency? At one time, I think it was, what, $14,000 or $16,000 for one a Bitcoin? One? Who has that? You know, how many people uh, would have to contribute to buy into that? The only other liberal, I'm just kind of ranting right now. The only other way to find some liberation or sovereignty is to have your own gold and silver. But what portion do you have to invest in this cryptocurrency thing? But I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at it from a different uh, perspective. 
so I can try to lay out a, 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 a outline so I can explain what I was shown better. But that's kind of, I might have did a basic where you kind of getting uh, what is soon to take place and what's being moved. Right now, I want to talk about one more thing before I let y'all go. And it's about the precious metals here in this in this uh, earth. And not only the precious metals, I'm not talking about, how to say, there are many, many priceless life-sustaining elements in this world. Talked about it earlier. Seeds, S-E-E-D-S. Um, fish and all seafoods and or, or sea animals and creatures and the waters itself. And um, even in one live stream, I asked you to activate Google Earth and zoom up on the, uh, the shores of our water bodies throughout the earth and you will see this like the skull and x you will see the fish skull and the x you zoom in and you read the information that's offered with that icon and it lets you know that the waters are highly contaminated etc etc remember if you don't have water you die so uh, is they have successfully bottled some water but for the most part they just can't seize control of all the water because I think was it 90% of the planet or something like that, whatever it is, is made of water. But they did contaminate it and it is shown on Google Earth. I'm just throwing y'all little nuggets out there to research. Uh, uh, so I'm, I, I digress and I want to go back and talk about these precious metals. Now I shared that 20 plus years ago when I was in the church, I started my research on the precious metals and gemstones of this earth and I was prompted to do so by something that I read in the Bible that was in Revelations and this was a part of what took me out of the church after that set of research and also um, it's funny how life works out when I was about 11 or 10 or 11 my mom took me to Virginia she was born in Virginia and she took me there down in some caverns and I got to see the natural um, sediments as they grow naturally in the earth. And and I, I've had a lot of world travels, but it was that being under the ground and seeing, you know, uh, the, what they call it, sediments developing naturally that sparked my interest many years ago. And I bring that up because in life, it slowly walked me to start researching these precious uh, minerals and metals. 20 years ago, when I was in church, I could pull up so much information on the internet about the various metals and and the pricing and what they were for, the um, attributes of them. I couldn't do that yesterday. And so I'm going to go back. But I kind of get the feeling that um, our system is beginning to block information. That's the downside of technology. It's not like books. What's printed in the books and in those libraries, you can go pull that over and over again and make copies of it. Stuff that's on the internet can be changed. I don't care how uh, extensive it is. It can always be changed, swapped out, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I do ask you to watch for that. There is, um, I think, information is beginning to be shrouded. The more we're open to, the more we're learning, the more we gain control of our intellect, um, the more we'll be shrouded. And that goes into another trending topic, which is the Mandela Effect. Things changing is for a purpose. You have to know what you know. So I'm still going back to those precious metals and minerals and things. <clears throat> because my luck in um search in my search last night for looking for looking for the world's most expensive precious metal was a complete failure. I could find nothing like I found 20 years ago. I was like, well. Let me go to the periodic table. And that's when I realized all the metal, uh, you know, certain things, I believe is the yellow on the periodic table, are metals. And so I started clicking on the metals and researching the metals. What am I doing? I'm looking for the prices associated with these metals. We've already identified that the metals are um, pressed out. In, in, in Troy's 
uh, it's called a tea ounce, a small tea ounce, which is one twelfth of a pound. And so that's for all of them. And each of those tea ounces equals something as a value. But the value depends on which metal it is. I'm going somewhere with this. So I was looking for the world's most expensive metal. 20 years ago, I could find that. Not last night. I couldn't find it. But I was weak and tired. So I'm going to go back and do it. But when I was searching, one particular metal did come up. Or element came up. And that metal was, y'all tell me you're ready. Y'all ain't ready. I wasn't ready. I just blanked my eyes. I was like, really? Look, y'all, I was like, really? <laughs> anyway, it was antimatter. A N T I M A T T E R. Antimatter. That means that. I guess it couldn't have been a metal. I had put metal. It said metal. it can't be metal. We're going to say that it is uh, some type of atom or something. I don't freaking know. I'm going back and look at that. But antimatter is the most, supposed to be the most expensive substance. Whatever it is. Element, material, whatever. I'm looking. I'm going to search again uh, on this planet. And I bring that up because antimatter is just what it says. Antimatter removes any existing matter, including me, you, or this earth. I can't see how antimatter could possibly exist. Because where it is, it would be, you know how you have you ever heard how this universe has began to when it's when it was the big boom or big bang or whatever, from the big bang, the universe kept expanding, 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 expanding. For there to be the antimatter, it would have to be going in reverse and constantly consuming and shutting down and contrasting to the So for you, uh, humans to come into antimatter would mean that they immediately created that which absorbs all that expands. And that's all another thing. I'm just digress. But anyway, this is what I pulled up on Google. So I'm telling you, it's some little stuff to the game sometimes. But anyway, remember I said I was looking for the price, the most expensive price. And the most expensive price was the antimatter. And antimatter, check this out, is valued at 62.5 trillion dollars. 62.5 trillion dollars per gram. Per gram. You know what a gram look like per gram? Uh, 62.5 trillion dollars per gram. That has got to be hypothetical. Um, uh, yeah, got to be theoretical. Uh, but I say that, and I bring that up. Because that which can erase all existence... Per gram. We have been talking about ounces right now. We're talking about per gram. This is smaller. It's $62.5 trillion. Cryptocurrency. Let's say, hypothetically, case scenario, I am a affluent millennial, which I ain't, but I, as I say, and I have so much money that I corner the market in antimatter. For every gram of antimatter I have, it is worth $62.5 trillion. Mm -mm -mm. So, just to get a little more sophisticated with it, we're going to say I got only two grams. Of antimatter. That means that I would be worth, was that 0, 5, 12, 125 trillion dollars cryptocurrency. How many people can I fund with 125 
trillion dollars. How many people can I fund in a year? Every year that I have this antimatter. And this antimatter never leaving the vault in my basement. All I do is cover a portion of the world by contributing into the universal income. And the reason why I bring that up, talking about the antimatter or gold or silver, go look at the periodic table and click on them and see all the various metals. And then you got to go somewhere else to look at all the stones that exist. And then you can go somewhere else to look at, well, I guess the minerals is on a periodic table too, all that we know about, but there's a whole bunch of stuff out here. And how each millennial may be over a particular element, I don't know. And not only the element itself, but all that it creates in this world. An example is gold. Let's say, I don't know who's the biggest holder of the biggest depositor of gold. I would think Great Britain, the crown. But do you know that it's not just that they have the gold. It's what did they do with the gold? Did they make fronts for teeth and make, you know, more money, I'll say? Or did they uh, create circuitry in the machines that we use, creating more money or funds or outreach? Or how about, uh, what else goal go into? My point is, they don't just hold on to that goal. That goal helps to create the world that we live in and all the things that we use to make life easier. And therefore, we go to work, we make money, and we buy these things from them. And what does it do? It helps them pay those others that are skilled and proficient and going to mine and harvest and, and, and store and lock away these various things. It helps them pay for scientists. Scientists and stuff don't be having a lot of that stuff, not like they have. You know, it allows you, them to pay them the big money. To figure out how to use these various elements and um, uh, minerals and diamonds. All these things have a property in our world one way or another. These are rules to the game that the general millennials as well as the rest of us are not aware of. We're not aware. We are moving into a new paradigm and our life, quality of life will change. Why? Because we are under intellectual uh, our, our intellect is under arrested of development and this here is to wake us up and the one thing I want you to wake up for, to in this one is to understanding the significance of um, the periodic table and what it really means what it explains to you and then how it reveals the level of wealth, wealth on this earth and how you and me we can tap into it we can tap into it. But the only way, y'all, I'm just rambling right now. But the only way we can tap into it is basic lay men, lay men, women making 9 to $20 an hour. Is that we got to come to learn to work together and to pool our funds in order to buy bigger portions and chunks. But this is another thing y'all notice. And y'all y'all can post y'all questions. I'm done because I'm just rambling. I was trying to think of something. Um, it was something else I wanted to show y'all. About the, what did I just say? Something fell in another room. Uh, about the gosh, it was important. It was really important about oh, coming together. Yeah, coming together and pulling our money to buy these things so we don't have to be a part of one of those um, millennials line. Going back into that, which is important about pulling our money. Gosh dang it, short memory loss. Um, oh, when I was looking up the pricing. For the most expensive metals and stones, I couldn't find it. 20 years ago, I could. 20 plus years ago, I could. Last night, I couldn't find it. Again, I did weak research. I was tired, sick. But what I noticed is when I was searching, that's when this dumb antimatter thing came up. Talking about some $6.25 trillion uh, antimatter, which would, again, erase all of reality. Mm, so it got to be theoretical. So, um... The reason I bring it up is because I, I noticed that the, the, the search engine itself only rendered because people are into buying precious metals and stones and gems and things because they understand that money is going to be outdated in a moment's notice is going to be gone. And the only thing you can bargain with is with the precious metals and minerals. Most of us can't afford them. I know I can't. And the only way we can is to come together and work together to buy it up. 
Well, who can trust who? See, we're in a tug of war. But anyway, when I was doing my basic research, just Googling it, I realized that the responses were limited to uh, what they call traders. And so they didn't deal with really high end metals is what I'm trying to get to. <clears throat> they didn't deal they didn't deal, deal with high end metals. They didn't speak anything about it. They wouldn't even give a quote about the, the pricing uh per ounce per gram per troy, whatever. I, I don't even remember Troy, this is new to me. Detroit. You know, you know, diamonds used to be in carrots so they didn't give you know what I mean diamonds, you know, it was like I'm gonna say seventeen basic or popular in grasp, in a range, metals and minerals, not minerals, metals and gems that they gave um, uh, cataloged. When I say catalog, I'm talking about all the response I got cataloged the exact same minerals, uh, metals, and exact same gemstones. Like we know popular gemstones are emeralds and um, onyx and uh, diamonds, you know, the basics, pearls. They, they'll give you information on that. But there were gems. One little piece of gem. I was looking back 20 years ago. They were worth multi-million dollars for a little piece. So I mean, where in your brain? I ain't seen none of that. Why? Why? Because the general public can't afford it. And they won't don't want people to understand what's out here. And what's taking place as we move from the old paradigm into the new paradigm. And what's really funding this, these millennials' wealth. It's not money. Was funding, like I'm going to give you an example, another example. One millennial family may be over the seedling, the seeds. Uh, they may also be in the ones that's funding the science that is removing the seeds from various vegetations and fruits, uh, those kind of things. But the actual seed they harvest and lock away in vaults. What does that give them the upper hand over humanity and food? Those kind of things. You'll do what I say. You'll bend to my wheel. Because I have the food. You understand? And so this is where we're going as we move out of the old paradigm into the new paradigm. Now back to these um, basic, I mean these precious metals. As mentioned, it was the, the, the responses I got from Google were basic, like the basic 17. It dealt with gold, silver, um, platinum, aluminum, uh, copper, the basics. And they give quote for how much it is. But when I'm talking about those uh, metals that were uh, millions and billions of dollars that literally exist, they wouldn't even quote them. They wouldn't even quote them. Number one, um, the market for most of it has been cornered. There is another thing I want to talk about. Y'all, I'm just rambling. Y'all go ahead and write out your burning questions you may have, and I'll move forward and answer them. I thank you for your time and your support and listen to me ramble. I hope I put something in your ear and it, you know, motivates you to research and you come back. And because I can't cover everything, I just dive off a little into everything. You know, I hear about um, divinely, I guess I could say, divinely inspired, I hear something. And so I move on it out of curiosity. Sometimes, uh, you know, you got turned on to something that, uh, uh, what is this here? Oh, heck, they didn't cut me off while I'm rambling. Chat disconnected, please wait, retry. It's annoying. I don't even know if I'm lying. That was, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, projected to be the case when I was in middle school. That everything would be automated and all that they told us in middle school stood true. And I still didn't make the right uh, curriculum selection when <laughs> I was coming up. I was just hard-headed. Uh, and I said, thank you uh, for sharing. Get well soon. Thank you. I plan to because I'm going to plot right over in that bed. But any burning questions at all? It was something else I wanted to tell y'all. Because I was just, just blown away by um, the research yesterday that I was doing uh, intermediately. And how, I mean, they would not name. I was just really looking because um, I wanted to make a jury collection back in the day. And it was directly re related to biblical prophecy. And so I did. I accumulated a lot of information. So this is not something that I just browsed through when I was younger, right before I came out to church. No, I was looking to make a jury collection. I had set the whole thing up. Everything wrote the business plan out. I just never could find funding. That's another thing I people don't care for me never worked well with other people not me 
They just don't uh, vibe me. So that never went anywhere. But I did an extensive amount of research. And so I know that these um, minerals and various things are out and about. And it was just intriguing to me how it didn't even come up yesterday. And I say, you know, what's the significance of that? Of not allowing people to know that they're not they're waking up to understand the what wealth really is. I have a video here on YouTube on my channel about what wealth really is. Many of us think it's that money. And it's not money. It is anything that sustains your life or enhances your life. And that is the various foods or things that can be used for foods. Anything that can be used for shelter. That's why these things cost. This is why, um, you know, as money. And now the, the real wealth um, is being hidden away from people. But uh, I guess it would be such a mass, mass um, gathering to have enough people come together to buy a, a, a piece or a, a metal, a, let's see, like I've seen them for ounces for um, billions of dollars, I mean multi-millions of dollars. You get a... Uh, so many people to come up with that. I mean, that would be a big move. But to have so many people come together and invest and buy their own like million dollar or billion dollar pound of something. And that's what sustains them. Because remember, the actual material wealth does not, the, the material, the resource itself doesn't go anywhere. That is the source. That is the funding. And that same piece of metal will be used in like x-ray machines or the answer for cancer or anything that comes from that. That's what we're missing. And I hope that we get to this place where our intellect is able to increase at a pound and to become proficient, to become geniuses in this area. That's why it's important. You know, if you can, you know, some people like myself, the stress of life keeps me from being able to think as in depth as I would like. But some people don't have stress like that. Some people may not have an interest in school because they really just don't understand what it's about. They might hear my message and say, oh, that's what school really about. Now I can focus and go there. You know, now I can focus and become a doctor. Or I can focus and become a science. I can focus and not just become a science, a chemist, the alchemist. I can change this thing. You know, I can't. Look, my kids don't listen to me, but they can always come here to YouTube when they want to hear me. They, that's what my kids do. Like, we ain't going to talk to mama. We're just going to go on our YouTube channel and click on a video that talks about, at least we know she's only going to talk for how many ever minutes at the bottom of the video. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Uh, another <clears throat> important interest I want to talk about, why I'm on here, because I ain't been on here in a while, is this is going back and talking to uh, talking about how what's going on out front, the facade, to cover up what is actually going on underneath. What's going on, remember, at the front is a smiley face, a facade, an Instagram, a selfie, or whatever they call it. Um, is you can do whatever you want to do. You can break whatever rule you want to break. But there are laws, whether made by universe or, or nature or man. There are laws that exist in this realm that govern this realm. You break them, then you will pay the penalty. Bottom line. And this is one of the um, forms of trickery they're running on the young folks as we move from the old paradigm into the new paradigm. Talking about ascending. They don't talk about descending. They talk about us ascending. Uh, all this stuff is shrouding the truth from the younger generation. And one of those things, one of those areas of expertise in which geniuses exist, people that are proficient, is the law. I talk about the law a lot because it's important. And I didn't look it up because I went and also looked up this area. I said I was going to pull it up, but I forgot, so I ain't going to do it now. It was this, I was looking up the various areas of law, and it looked like it might have been about, mm, in short, about 30 or 40 various areas of law, you know, from tax and land or estate, you know, various types of law, tort law, and all these things. But the younger generation, um, don't many of them don't believe that education is important. They don't believe that they, it's like this. This 
it, it, I, and I, I can't believe it. I, I really can't. I tell y'all all the time, I've been re reared by Saturn. I don't believe it. Do I believe the world is changing? Yes. Do I believe in change? Yes. Do I believe that we are technologic, continuing to technologically advance? Yes. All of these things I believe. But not for one minute do I believe that the laws are totally going to be washed away. And you can do what you want to do. Now what the laws may do, and they're doing it now. Hell, Trump's doing it. And everybody in this county are doing it. They will update the laws in your face or up under your nose. Whatever they got to do, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. So yes, the laws do exist. And to be a lawyer is very, very important. Uh, to have a law background or some awareness or knowledge is important. Is English important? Yes, they are outdating the, what I don't even know what it's called, uh, L-A-T-L-T-A, -L -T -L -T whatever English was called when I was going through it. Didn't know it then, barely know it now, but I know enough. The younger generation, they rewrote the whole thing after that no child left behind. There's so much going on. Y'all see, I can't remember all this thing. Okay. But okay, very good. Have a great night. Thank you for dropping by. And how when they rewrote the academic platform, they were cutting out parts of creating the English language and the structure and the whole spell casting. They talk about another trendy thing, the spell casting. So what am I saying? The younger generation ain't going to understand the spell. I'm not saying that the spell casting is right. No, it's wrong. But it is a part of this realm. And the the people in power, the elitists, the changing of the guard into the younger millennials will continue to execute those spells. But the younger generation won't even know um, what they're coming up against. They won't be aware. Why? Because they don't know how to write the spells. They don't know how to decode the spells or nothing. Why is it happening now? Why is it happening that people are now decoding the spells? Why is it happening now that people are starting to understand what the, these biblical texts were saying? Well, you got to look at it, at least from my, my perspective, from the black community, being an African-American. Hey, many of us descended from people that lived from the land and from nature. Then some folks came from folks that were slave, bought across strips, didn't even read the language, didn't know the terrain. It took 400 years for them to come over here just to the rain. Crazy folks beating on them. They had to learn how to speak the people language, learn how to read. They write, learn to interpret, interpret it. Then they came out. They had to work themselves out of poverty. Then the next generation started going to college. And then once they went to college, they was able to the next generation was it probably like the generation before man was the largest generation and that's when the crack came in that they really went to college and became proficient well and that there that's a level of genius that exists as well it's called a level of genius i'm saying they measuring this all the time i don't care if people don't believe in this um what they call it uh, iq or not it's good enough for the folks in power to measure a level of intellect, a person, individual's level of intellect, to know what you're capable of doing or changing in this world. College. Above average level or college student. IQ is anticipated to be between 115 to 124. So what am I saying? I'm going to go with the ancient slave trade thing. We're going to say that any slave that was um, stolen or removed from Africa, their homeland, their home tongue, and heritage. IQ, relative to, uh, IQ is relative to um, the structure in which they live, we'll say that. It's only 20. You know, that is profound mental retardation. That's how uh, the early colonizers were saying that African Americans were retarded and stupid. They were removed from their native language. They were in a foreign um, terrain. They didn't understand. They had, they didn't know the language. They didn't know how to write. They they in their own land they knew how to do their proficiency. Probably geniuses had to be geniuses because in four years, under years, is what I'm saying, and learn to speak their language, learn to write the language, learn to read their language, and then came up, went to college, became doctors, lawyers. Had our president, you know, so had to be geniuses. That, that only a genius could accomplish that even in 400 years and get in the hunger strip. But anyway, going with that historical information, 
slaves being removed or Africans being removed from their homeland, their home lang language and forms of communication and tradition by the means here in the United States would have been probably the IQ of about 20, uh, which would have been profound mental retardation. But over uh, 400 years, uh, we're going to say by the, what the people that was born in 1950, uh, 1960s and there, that was the largest group of people that African Americans, uh, minorities that went on to college um, and completed it. Um, their IQ is it was expected to be a range in from we move from 100, I mean, from 20 all the way up to 115 to 120 uh, as the IQ, which is above average college students. And now, I just ain't been on here in a long time. This is why the elitists are scared. This is why they're making their move. This Just we're just talking about the African American culture and how in um, like they say four hundred so years they went from an IQ based on standard standard uh, standards of this um, demographic area from twenty an IQ of twenty up it's even further because my generation even the generation that I just spoke of but my generation is anticipated to have an IQ of 125 are considered gifted graduate. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And if a person made it sight down, if a person made it to become a professor, professor were so educated, got their doctrine and did they, what they call it, the doctor, or they call it their thesis or whatever, Okay, their IQ is 143 to 154. What am I saying? That we have more black professors or minority professors now than we ever have in history, in world history. Therefore, we have the largest majority with an IQ ranging between 143. So, we are raising the consciousness, but not the broad majority of humanity, but more than we ever have. And the truth of the matter is, the gap between, I would say, the average person and the elitist genius has closed quickly within 400 years. Now, the um, highest genius known IQ ranges between 165 and just short of 200. The highest genius knows, the mathematician, the highest genius known, the mathematician, IQ ranges between 165 and just less than 200. And in 400 years, minorities have come from an IQ of 20 all the way up to and through 154. What's the difference between the general population that have risen up to 154 and the highest genius that exists here in this world, which is 165? If my math is correct, because I ain't no genius, that's only 11 points between us being um, eye to eye with those that have been in power. So this is the appropriate time for them to make their move and reconstruction of our system. If they do not, then our IQs will all be equivalent to that of geniuses. Geniuses, meaning we are proficient in some area of um, academic interest relative to this world. And so I thank y'all for coming in here and hearing me ramble on. I'm happy that y'all dropped by. I'm going to give me some rest now. And next time y'all hear from me, hopefully I'll feel better. Good night, loves. Bye. If I can remember how to get off here, it's been so long. Oh, my God.